had a really great question come through on the Instagram page talking about FTP and asking percentage of VO2 max, FTP, how do they relate? High number, low number, what should we be aiming for based on our training? And ultimately that led to a better discussion around probably the biggest factor that holds back amateur and age group athletes when it comes to improving their FTP. If you're someone who feels like you get stuck at threshold, you're struggling to continue to improve it, get a little bit faster, produce more power, this might be a really interesting discussion to keep an eye on. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Nick here, making sports science simple. And it's been a long time coming since we've done a video like this, but for good reason. If you've been keeping up to date with the channel, in particular the performance vlog series, um, you'll know that that's now the rehab series, as you can see, still in the moon boot. Uh, not great, stress fracture in my tibia. Um, gonna be out for a little bit of while, training wise. So if you wanna keep up to date with that side, hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, there's regular updates coming. I'm taking you right through the rehab process, plus then when we get back, all the training side of things as well. But that's also why I've been a bit slack with some of these. So in today's video, we're gonna be covering off another sports science or scientific principle um, or component of endurance performance really, and that's percentage of VO2 max and how it relates to FTP. Like I said in the intro, great question that came through and ultimately it's one of those things that we know a lot about FTP or most people do. It's that functional threshold power or functional threshold pace, depending if you're cycling, running, etc. That theoretical 45 to an hour intensity for the most part. What can we sustain where we've got a pretty constant, uh, I guess, accumulation of blood lactate, but we're able to metabolize and, and work through that pretty pretty comfortably. Generally, it's not gonna start increasing until well past uh, our threshold. We go past this intensity, we start to fatigue a lot faster. We stay below it, we're able to sustain that intensity for a lot longer, and the lower and lower we go, obviously the more applicable to the longer endurance events. So typically, for intensities at FTP, just a little refresher, we're looking at things like 10K running. Um, we're looking at something like a sprint distance triathlon, hour time trial on the bike is the obvious one. But these are, these are our ones where we're gonna be bang on that FTP intensity or that functional threshold intensity. Typically from an endurance perspective as well, the person who has the highest functional threshold power or the highest velocity at threshold, which is functional threshold pace essentially, even if all variables were equal, if you had the same VO2 maxes, et cetera, and same conditions in terms of racing, everything was equal, you basically cloned yourself. Whoever had the higher threshold is probably going to be the person who's gonna win that event, excluding all other variables like environment, nutrition, etc. So that's where it's a really important part of our physiology and a really important part of the endurance performance equation. Understanding it in relation to our total engine though is a really critical aspect. And that's what percentage of VO2 max is talking about. Where does threshold sit in relation to our bigger part of the engine, which ultimately, the greatest indicator of what, what our aerobic engine size is, is what is our VO2 max? So we've covered off this quite a bit on this channel around what is VO2 max. Quick refresher for you though, VO2 max is the maximum amount of oxygen we can take in, transport and utilize in one minute. It's a really good definer of how big is our engine. The reason for that is because ultimately at the end of the day, our VO2 max is usually gonna be somewhere between a five to seven minute flat out effort. Very different pending the type of training you do, um, how much you can put up with the hurt, especially as well, what your training history is, genetics, all of that. But typically somewhere between a five and seven minute flat out effort, one and done type, type scenario. Our FTP is that theoretical 45 to an hour, as we said before. So our FTP, first and foremost, cannot exceed VO2 max. And this is where from a lab testing perspective, I see a range of uh, percentage of VO2 max for all different types of athletes when it comes to where their FTP sits. I see things as low as sort of 70 odd percent of VO2 max, but right up to 90, 95. Now, if we look at a professional elite example to begin with, those guys, they're holding a very high percentage. They have a very, very big engine, very, very high VO2 max, producing a lot of power or running really, really fast and they hold say 90, 92% at the really, really top end. They hold a really high percentage of their VO2 max as where their threshold sits. That's largely because they are pros, they're professionals. That's like, I mean, they've got the best genetics. There's a reason why they're racing at the top end. They have really big engines and they can hold a high proportion of it. For everyone else back at the amateur and age group level, we see quite a broad range. And the reason for this is largely because of how the individual's oxygen consumption interacts with intensity. And part of this is down to what we call oxygen kinetics or just the way in which oxygen consumption changes with increasing intensity or changes to intensity. I'll give you an example. A lot of the time I quite often see amateur endurance athletes come in and they have a pretty okay VO2 max. And what I might mean by that is let's say they have a relative VO2 max of 45, 50, maybe even 55 mils per kilo per minute. It's pretty good, they're pretty fit, 
much fitter than the general population, but nowhere near the 75, 80, 85 uh, VO2 max number you'll see from that pro or professional. They're pretty handy amateur athletes like to race, recreational, whatever the case may be. So not bad. Some of those might have a really high percentage of VO2 max for where their threshold sits. So let's say uh, athlete A gets to 270 watts at VO2 max, the FTP is say 210. That's a pretty typical pattern for a lot of people I see who are in that sort of amateur recreational aspect. So hopefully these numbers sound somewhat familiar to you if they're well below, well above. It's just an example. So the FTP of 210, their, their VO2 max at 270. Now this calculation in terms of percentage of VO2 max doesn't take place based on power. It takes place based on oxygen consumption. So for athlete A who has these characteristics, that's where they get to in their testing. That's the identified numbers we've got from a power perspective. Their oxygen consumption may come up really, really slowly. So what that might mean is when we get to FTP, there may not actually be much of a change in oxygen consumption by the time we get to VO2 max. Even though there's 60 watts difference, the way in which they've trained previously, maybe they've done a lot of threshold work, maybe they've barely touched the top end in terms of VO2. So all of these individual characteristics, genetics, etc., might play into the fact that their oxygen consumption comes up really, really slow. So the difference between 210 and say 270 watts isn't much. What that leaves us with is 30 watts, uh, well, sorry, 60 watts difference in terms of FTP power versus VO2 max power, but it might also mean our percentage of VO2 max for where FTP sits could be 85, 90% of VO2 max because of how their oxygen consumption is uh, interacting and, and the way in which it's coming up past that. Maybe part of that is gonna be down to, they just don't have a big enough engine. We need to train that VO2 max. We need to train the size of their engine. So one, we can use more oxygen, so it's allowing it to come up more. But, but also it's giving us more room to be able to then start to move FTP largely again on the by, byproduct of increasing the ability to use oxygen, which is all those processes take in transport utilites. I could take athlete B though, coming back to my example, who's got a VO2 max of 270 watts, their FTP is at 210, and they could be at 75, 80% of VO2 max when they hit FTP. Reason for that? Maybe their oxygen consumption is a little bit more linear as intensity increases. Theirs just constantly just gradually gets up there. Started maybe a bit lower, gradually got up to FTP and then continued to go. Part of that might be because they might have worked on that aerobic power a little bit more, but some of it could just be that, that individual characteristic of how their oxygen consumption comes up. So this is one of the problems when we're looking at assessing it is really you have to actually measure the oxygen consumption component. And the only way you can do that to understand where does my FTP sit in relation to my engine is actually have a look at the lab data, assess and directly measure oxygen consumption to be able to then analyze where does that sit. Of course, you could do a ramp test at home and very, very similar sort of protocols that you can guess a little bit, but just taking say 210 divided by 300, multiplied by 100, that's a percentage based equation, isn't gonna tell you percentage of VO2 max. It'll tell you percentage of power close to VO2 max, but it's not gonna tell you that oxygen consumption characteristic, which you can see applies a lot of context to the situation. If I look at even an example of using the rooms in here, so. I'm gonna pull away from here. You can see the room I'm in at the moment, hopefully you can see it, has a reasonably okay height ceiling. That's like my example before of maybe 270 watts is where their VO2 max is at, maybe 55 relative, let's say. And if I stood on the on my desk, <laughs> without my moon boot, if I stood on my desk and I tried to jump, I'd be able to I'd be able to get most of the way up. But at some point, if I kept stacking the desk higher and higher and higher to try and increase my FTP. Think about the, the gap between where I am and, and the top and how high I can jump being FTP. I'm limited by the size of the room. And that's ultimately what VO2 max is doing for a lot of these athletes without working on that top end. It's capping that ability to continue to develop FTP and how high we can start purely because there's no more room to move. Whereas if I take a different athlete who might have a little bit more room to move, someone who, again, VO2 max of 270 watts, FTP, say 210, we might actually be able to squeeze a little bit more out of them if their room looks a little bit more like the one over there. Much higher ceiling, so if I stand on the same desk or the same table and I jump, I'm not gonna hit my head as easily, so there will actually be more room. Typically, what that is gonna look like is more like someone who has those same power numbers, but maybe a VO2 max of, say, 60, assuming both these athletes were the same weight. That's a really key thing to note here. So a slightly higher absolute oxygen consumption, what that means is their, their FTP is actually a lesser percentage of that. So there probably is the ability to be able to move it and actually increase the percentage of VO2 max that they can hold and ultimately increase the, the, the FTP power or FTP pace too. In this side of things, that athlete A example, not so much. So a really critical component for this one is we've got to lift that the height of the ceiling. We've got to, we've got to move that upper end, which is going to come down to VO2 max type work. Other athlete who's got a lot of room to move already, we could go either way. Increasing the engine is not going to be damaging or harmful. 
continuing to improve VO2 max is still gonna be a really effective method of training. And if we move their VO2 max from 270 to 300, I can guarantee their FTP is coming up 20, 30 watts anyway. Then we can go and train it really specifically and do our traditional FTP or threshold type work. That's gonna lift it as a further percentage again. So that's probably the biggest limiter to a lot of age group and amateur uh, endurance athletes when it comes to not being able to continue to improve their FTP. It's because they might already be at a high percentage of their VO2 max or their, their FTP is already quite close. And like I said before, your FTP cannot exceed VO2 max. VO2 max being that five to seven minute um, flat out maximal intensity, realistically, your FTP being 45 to an hour. There has to be a gap between those in terms of intensity. If we can lift that VO2 max that little bit more though, it allows us to move FTP as a percentage a little bit easier. So hopefully you got a bit out of this video, like I said at the beginning, been a little while since I've done one of these. If you have any questions or topics you want me to cover on the channel over the next little while, please leave them in the comments down below or any other questions regarding FTP, its interaction with VO2 max. Happy to hear them and engage in the discussion down below. Um, otherwise, continue to support, like these videos, subscribe to the channel, share them on social media. Um, absolutely love the support for the channel and looking forward to creating some more videos throughout 2022. So glad to be back talking about sports science, not just harping on about the rehab performance side of things. Thanks again for watching this one. We'll leave it there and we'll see you in the next one.